Alright guys, I am back with my review of this week's WWE Friday Night Smackdown for September 13th, 2013. And the show starts off with the big show in the ring. And he has to issue an apology to the WWE Universe and all the wrestlers for his actions on Raw. And Triple H comes out and says he's going to suspend the big show tonight without pay. And that's a big deal for the big show because as we all know, he's broke. And Big Show goes to leave, but the Shield comes out, they try to beat him down, and Big Show fights them off for a little bit. He actually climbs on top of the announce table, which I thought looked kind of stupid. Um, but he does fight them off until they beat him down with a chair, and then they powerbomb him. And it was okay, I guess, minus the announce table stuff, because that was pretty stupid. But I don't understand why Big Show is getting such a huge role in this storyline. It just doesn't really make any sense. Like, where does this go? What direction are they going in for the big show? Unless it's just to make a big swerve and have him join the new corporation. Um, it's kind of like, why is so much focus on the big show? Where are they going with this? Um, but that's the opening segment so far. So it's Naomi, Brie Bella, and Natalia versus Layla, Oksana, and Alicia Fox. All the Total Divas are out there. AJ comes out to do commentary. This came off so bad. So Natalia goes for the sharpshooter on Oksana, maybe? I can't remember. AJ gets in the ring, and Natalia just throws her like she's nothing. And then the Divas surround her, um, Brie, Natalia, and uh, the other one. And they all just beat her up. Um, Natalia says, you're not a champion. She slaps her. Brie hits her with a face buster. Naomi kicks her in the face. And then Natalia kind of goes for the sharpshooter. And the other divas, Layla and all of them, pull AJ out. It just looked really shitty. Um, so I didn't care for this at all. This was pretty bad stuff. But are the Bellas supposed to be baby faces now because of all this? Um, that's what I'm trying to figure out, is what is everyone supposed to be? Vicky Guerrero hosts the Dancing with the WWE Superstars or something. And it's uh, R-Truth, Fandango, Miz as the Miz Co Inferno, and the Great Kali, and they all dance. Miz is wearing an afro, and um, he's trying to twerk or something. It was just really bizarre. Um, but Miz wins the dance off and then Fandango tries to attack him and Miz and Truth beat up Fandango and then they do another dance. Um, so Miz dances with his old tag team partner here. Um, that was it. I have no idea why they put this on television. I could understand if this is something they wanted to do for the live audience, kind of like a dark match. Um, but I have no idea how this made television. Alright, so Ryback just interviewed Barrister Artie Evans from Ring of Honor. And he asked him about his dreams and aspirations. And Artie Evans says that he wants to be a wrestler. He dreams of being at WrestleMania and all this stuff. And then Ryback just bitch slaps him. Um, I really liked this. I thought it was awesome to see Ryback doing his bullying thing again. They kind of... They kind of stopped it for a couple weeks because Ryback was actually having matches again. Um, but I have to admit, I missed Ryback bullying people backstage. I enjoy these segments, so um, I'm glad they brought it back here. Vicky tells Ricardo that it can't be in RVD's corner at Night of Champions because it's too dangerous. So Ricardo freaks out, and she says, Okay, you can be in his corner, but he's going to be in your corner tonight when you face Del Rio. And then we get Santino versus Damian Sandow, and Santino beats him with the Cobra. This has been a weird fucking show. Michael Cole interviews Curtis Axel and Paul Heyman, and Heyman says if you order Night of Champions, you will see CM Punk get his hands on him. Um, he's going to destroy him, and it'll probably be the last time you ever see Paul Heyman. I really don't like the way they're trying to sell this angle. I think it comes across as desperate. And you got Punk out there saying, I guarantee you I will get my hands on Heyman. And Heyman saying, he's going to get his hands on me. Order the pay-per-view. Um, I really hate that. Then we get Del Rio versus Ricardo Rodriguez. 
And Ricardo did hit a Tornado DDT, so he got a little offense, um, which I thought was too much. Any offense was too much here. Um, Del Rio should have just destroyed him. He's the champion. But Del Rio beats him with the reverse suplex off the top. And after he's beat him, he puts him in the arm breaker. RVD runs in, attacks Del Rio, and hits him with the frog splash. It's Dean Ambrose versus Dolph Ziggler. Um, Dolph hits the fame master on Dean. And he goes for the pin, but Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins run out to break it up. And then the Usos run down. So Vicky comes out and makes it a six-man tag match. And one of the Usos goes for a splash on Seth Rollins, but he gets the knees up and then covers the Uso for the win. So the Shield won the match. Um, I thought it was okay. Nothing really impressive here, but the match was fine. And I'm wondering where the hell is Biggie Langston? I guess if they're doing this AJ Lee storyline with her against the Total Divas cast, they don't really have a place for Biggie in the story, but I'd like to see him back. I was actually... Uh, becoming a fan of Biggie Langston, mostly because of his awesome entrance music. Alright, so Edge comes out to host the Cutting Edge, and he comes through the smoke, and he gets this smoke stuff all over him, so he's trying to wipe it off. Um, it's kind of like what happened to Triple H at WrestleMania when he got that powder shit all over him. Um, but he gets in the ring, and he says Triple H told him he could come back because it's good for business. The fans chant good for business, and Edge says, the only reason I'm here is because of all of you. And, uh, <clears throat> Haven. So, he has Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton come out, and they cut some promos on each other. Orton tries to attack him. Daniel Bryan gets him in the no-lock, and Orton taps out. Referees pull Daniel Bryan off, and he does a yes chant in the show. So that was pretty much it, but um, I didn't think it was very good. Uh, the promos weren't the best. And just something didn't work with the whole getting him in the no-lock and Orton tapping out. It just, it felt like nobody really cared. I don't know if it was the crowd or what, but um, you would think with Orton tapping out, people would be cheering, and it was just kind of quiet. And it just felt like it didn't really mean a lot. I don't know, it's just my opinion of it. But SmackDown overall, uh, I have to say this was an average show. It was a very weird show. And, I don't know, there wasn't a lot of great stuff here. Um, it's the last show before the pay-per-view, so obviously their focus is on Night of Champions right now. Um, but they still did a few things, like they had the Daniel Bryan Orton segment here. Um, just last-minute build. And I was fine with that, but the show itself, it just it wasn't a very good wrestling show this week. Um, so that's my review of SmackDown. Hope you guys liked the video. Leave your thoughts on the show in the comments, and thanks for watching.